Hey, what's up everybody? This is Meath24, and today I've got another anime DVD review. This time it is of the film Redline, which uh, some of you probably haven't heard of before, and to be honest, I kind of stumbled across this one by accident. Uh, the trailer just looked really cool, uh, very visually stylized, and I thought, hey, I'll give this a chance. So basically what you have here is this futuristic race uh, setting where these racers go to all sorts of different planets uh, and compete in pretty ridiculous scenarios. And it's sort of like if you took Speed Racer and F-Zero, combine those two, put it on cocaine, and then shot it in a rocket ship into space, that's essentially what you get here. It's just completely ridiculous, um, but a ton of fun to watch, and has sort of a Star Wars feel about it in the sense that they gradually build this universe um, just by showing you like different species and different planets and stuff. It, it's relatively contained to a few settings, but you do get the sense that this is something that happens across the, the grander universe uh, that's built in this story here. So the story is primarily concerned with JP and then his uh, crew member slash partner uh, named Frisbee, and they compete in races with this souped-up car. And, and the thing that's interesting about that is that JP uses an old-style car with four wheels uh, that has, like, a ridiculously huge engine in it and stuff. But most of the other racers use, like, crawlers and, like, hover vehicles um, and just very futuristic sci-fi uh, style vehicles. There's one that even sort of turns into a mech of uh, some sort. And so it's interesting to see him use this very traditional style, and it's sort of like all the bets are always stacked against him. And Frisbee... And JP to a little bit lesser extent, but Frisbee primarily, um, is involved with this sort of mafia mob group, and they're doing some sort of shady dealings behind the scenes there. Um, and essentially what it is is that JP will always have these super low odds when he goes into a race, and then almost pull a win, but at the very end they'll sabotage it so that he can't win. Um, and eventually the guys who are rigging the race will get money that way. Um, so basically, you have that as a setup, and by default, uh, because two other racers back out of this red line race, JP and, uh, one other racer are eligible to go into it, which is kind of against what the, uh, you know, the thugs wanted, but they try and work it to their own angle just the same. And so what the red line is, is the most challenging and most dangerous race of them all, and the committee who decides where the races are going to be decides to put it on this planet called, Ro called Robo World, which is probably the most unimaginative name ever, but it's kind of a cool planet because all these cyborg people who are very militaristic in their, uh, in just their society and, and the way they approach their intergalactic politics, if you will, um, and they're firmly opposed to anyone having a race on their planet because they have been involved in some, uh, shady uh, scientific research and, and uh, military research as of late. Uh, so they don't want anyone going into that area, and as luck would have it, or rather the opposite for them, uh, the race goes straight through their main military hubs. So it's a super dangerous race, uh, but everyone's really excited about it, not because it's the red line alone, but because it's going to be in this very dangerous territory, and just amps up the excitement for it even more. Um... Aside from the race side of things, you have a story um, about JP and Sunashi, and they're rival racers, but they also have a history. Like, they know each other from uh, when they were younger, and they've kind of crossed paths a few times before. And there's sort of a romantic subplot that develops there. It's not overbearing, it's handled pretty nicely, um, and it does add something more interesting to the plot overall. Because, to be honest, while this film is fun to watch, there's not a whole lot of substance to it. It's mostly style. It's got a great soundtrack, it's a lot of fun to watch, the visuals are incredible, um, but it's really short, really simple, and, uh, you know, if you're going into it thinking you're going to get something really mind-blowing, not so much. It's, it's just kind of a fun, simple film to watch. Uh, the DVD here, uh, you got some cool artwork with JP on the front there, and basically that's him using his turbo, and his hair is getting all warped and ridiculous there. I uh, got the title along the side. Same thing on the the spine there, and then on the back, uh, you have a, there's a shot of his car, um, 
and then an explanation of what the film is about. You have a few bonus features, which is like a quick guide to the film, and then a uh, 2006 trailer uh, when they were you know first premiering the uh, early footage of the film. Um, I will say that this film is actually a little bit deceptive in its uh, approach to the story. The first half is, it seems very family-friendly. Uh, the second half, they work in a lot more adult language and adult scenarios and stuff. So, I uh, do know that this isn't really for uh, younger viewers. Um, but, you know, if, if you want to have something like F-Zero in the form of a movie, uh, like I said, it's kind of ridiculous, but it's a lot of fun to watch. Um, if, you, if you're looking for something that's quick and easy, it might be uh, worth your while. Um, but again, if you're looking for something with a lot of substance to it, it's, it's more style uh, in this film. But that's pretty much it for this review, and with that, I will see you guys next time.